Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace a basic t-shirt pattern. Pattern tracing is the quickest way to get started drafting patterns in Clo 3D. Any scale drawing of a pattern can be used for tracing, including historical pattern diagrams and the cutting layouts found in the back of commercial patterns. Check out my Patreon in the description below for the files used in this tutorial, as well as a written step-by-step -step guide, project ideas, and one-on-one -on -one support for advancing your skills. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to do is go to our library and we need to add an avatar. And if your library window isn't open up right now, it's probably because it's just on the sidebar here. So go ahead and click this, this little library tab right here and it will pull up the library, go to avatar, go to mail v2, and then let's let's use Thomas. All these avatars are the same size until you change their size, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. My Thomas is doesn't have any skin right now because my 3D display options are asking him to be monochrome surface, so I'll go ahead and change him to textured surface. And then just to create more space in my in my interface, I'm going to close out of the library by clicking this tiny little arrow right here. All right, now that I have Thomas in the scene, we need to add our t-shirt pattern. So I'm going to go to the 2D window and anywhere in the 2D window, I'm going to right click and choose format 2D background. In some versions of Clo3D, it says add background image. So whichever it says for you, go ahead and click that. And this window will pop up. And what you wanna do is click this tiny little file folder right here, and it'll open your, uh, documents and you need to navigate wherever in the wherever you've saved this pattern um, which you will find available on my patreon go ahead and double click that or click it and then choose open and it will put it into the 2d background just like that now it's putting it in at some random size that i don't really understand so what i need to do is change the scale right here to 35%. And I know it's 35% because I made this pattern and I've tested it before. If you're using a different pattern, then you just have to experiment until you find the right scale. Um, conveniently, there is this little shadow outline of your person, so you can kind of use that to, to judge how, how largely to scale your pattern, but it is really trial and error. And that's the only uh, thing we're gonna change here. We have rotation opacity, but those are fine. So we're gonna click okay. Now that we have our pattern in the scene, it's time to begin tracing. The main tool that you're going to use to trace is found over here. It's called the polygon tool, and that's right here. The hot key for the polygon tool is H. So I'm going to go ahead and hit H and you'll see that when um, I do it will select the polygon tool and then we're ready to go ahead and trace. So on this pattern I went ahead and put large dots everywhere that you need to put a uh, everywhere you need to click. And I did that because uh, for some people, the tendency is they want to trace, you know, the, the curve like this. And that's, that's just not necessary. Uh, you really just need to hit the corners and then we will curve the lines later. So I'm going to just click all of these and you can see these pink lines that appeared. They're showing me that the, my, cursor is lined up with some previous dots so if i go ahead and click here it means it's going to square it up with this dot which is nice and i like that so thank you and then when my pattern appears you can see it's this kind of opaque blob and i find it difficult to work that way so i'm going to actually go up to the 2d display options and choose right here it says translucent surface i'm going to go ahead and choose that and that makes it easier to work with when I use the polygon tool, I put all of the dots exactly where I wanted them, but if you didn't, it's okay that you can edit where you put those dots. And the editing tool for the polygon is actually the edit pattern tool, and that's the Z hotkey, and that's right up here, edit pattern with the Z hotkey. And when that's selected, you can move 
all of your points around to wherever you need them to go. Um, you'll notice that the first thing that I did is, you know, the whole polygon was selected. I had to click somewhere in the 2D background because it would have just moved all of it um, had I not. So I'll go ahead and put that there. And uh, if you want to add more points, you can right click the line and choose split and that you can just press press OK. You can be specific about where you want it to split, but you can also just press OK. And then you can drag that point and move it to where you need it. Um, if you've added an extra point, you could just click it and hit delete on the keyboard. All right, so we have all of our points exactly where we want them and we're ready to add the curves. So that's the C hotkey and you'll see it actually changed up here. If you press and hold th this icon up here, you'll see that there's many different options. So if you lose them, that's where they are. But we wanna go ahead and use the C hotkey, which is edit curvature. And with that selected, all we have to do is click and drag on our lines and it turns them into curves. And if you're having trouble getting the exact curve you want, what you need to do is actually go back to the Z hotkey or the edit pattern tool. And you once you click on one of your curves, you'll see that these blue bezier handles popped up. That's this one and this one. And adjusting those independently will... Um, you can do more fancy curves, like you can even make S curves, which we will need to do later on for our sleeve cap. One thing that I like to do just while I'm working is whenever I have a right angle, I always just like to move my bezier handle so that it is at a right angle so that I don't have a, a little awkward peaked neckline when I un go to unfold this pattern. And once you have it traced, go ahead and go to the Z hot key or edit pattern tool and then right click the center front line and choose unfold symmetric editing with sewing and that will basically unfold your pattern and it'll work if I want to edit one side of the pattern it's going to edit both sides so that's another great way if you didn't uh, change your neckline here to make sure there wasn't a peak this is you'll see right away that that's what you'll need to do and with that done let's go ahead and use the same technique to trace the back that's the H hotkey for the polygon tool and I'm just tracing all of those lines, C hotkey, to adjust my curves. And then with the Z hotkey still selected, go ahead and unfold symmetric editing with sewing. All right, I have a front pattern and a back pattern, um, but they are just kind of sitting in space. And if I were to hit the space key and simulate, they would just fall to the ground. Um, so I, I'm going to actually hit the space key again to stop simulation and then control Z to un or command Z to undo. Now, you can move these patterns around in the 3D space. If you click them, the gizmo will appear and you, and you can move that around. But the easiest way to dress the avatar with the patterns that you're working on is actually to use the shift F uh, fit or what is it called? Oh, show arrangement points. If you um, hit shift F and all of these dots, if you select a pattern and then hover over these dots, and then click, you can actually just move the pattern to where it needs to go. And that is the easiest way to dress your avatar. All right, the avatar is dressed, but there's still no seam lines. So if we hit simulate, the clothes still fall off. So we're gonna go ahead and unsimulate, control Z to restore that back to where it was. And we're gonna go ahead and sew. And there are several different sewing tool options in Clothe 3D, but we're just gonna start with the very simple segment sewing tool. So that's the N hotkey. And basically any segment that you click on, right? Like if I click on the side seam here, and then I click on what I wanna sew it to, like this side seam here, then it's going to create these seam lines here. And actually, I think my seam lines are hidden. I'm going to go ahead and show those. There they are. And you can see these seam lines are nice and straight. If I was to click near the armpit here on this on this seam, but then click near the hem here, you can see it's showing me those seam lines are going to cross. So it'll try to sew it. Uh, like this, which is a mess. Um, so if that happens and you can either, you know, control or command Z to undo it, or you can go to the edit sewing tool, which is the B hotkey and it's right up here. 
and you can right click that seam and select reverse sewing and then it'll straighten it out again. All right, the shoulder seams, I find if you're having a hard time imagining how they sew together when they're light and flat, you can also sew them in the 3D window by selecting them here and then selecting them there. And that's an easier way to sew things that may be a little bit hard to imagine in the 2D space. And with that, let's go ahead and simulate. Awesome. When, when While you're simulating, you can click and drag on the garment to adjust and move it around. Um, but if you're not simulating and you move the garment, it just kind of moves it as a shell and it doesn't actually move like fabric. So I'll go ahead and simulate that again. All right, we're going to follow the same exact steps and trace the sleeve. So H hotkey. And I'm going to start maybe at this line. Oh, I guess I forgot a little dot there. Hmm, I'll fix that before I publish this. And a dot there and right there. And while you're doing your sleeve, uh, make sure to have a center top point. It's always best to use as few points as possible, but you do need that center top point in order to get an S curve on either side of your sleeve cap. So that's C for starting a curve and you can't actually make an S curve happen with just the curve tool. Just get it, you know, close to where you want it on the top or wherever. And then you're going to have to use the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey to adjust that again. Like that. There we go. Using my Bezier handles and perfect. Let's go ahead and use Shift F to show our arrangement points and then select this one for the sleeve and then we can go ahead and sew our sleeve and I think I'll do this one in the 3D space as well because I can see that that is the front going to the front and then the back going to the back and I'll do the side seams in the 2D window, side seams, and go ahead and simulate. Sleeves can be kind of tricky to uh, get to work around the arm but the nice thing is that once you have one sleeve sewn you, it's really easy to get to the other one all you have to do is go to the a or transform pattern tool select the sleeve and do control or command d and that will duplicate the sleeve in the 2d window but it'll also put it exactly in the same symmetrical area in the 3d window so just simulate and you're done let's move on to the neck band so there's the polygon tool which you can use to make any shape but then there are also other tools here there is the if you click and hold down on this icon you can see there's the rectangle tool the ellipsy tool or even the spiral tool but we're going to use the rectangle tool and what you can do is you can click and drag for half this neck band and trace it like that another option that you have is to just what with the rectangle tool active just click anywhere in the 2d window and this window will pop up where you can type in your width which for me i know i wanted eight inch wide neckband and height and i want a 0.75 inch neckband and i that will go ahead and make the neckband in the right exact size that i want it to be okay so i want to unfold this neck band with symmetric editing just like i did the front and the back so let's say this is the center front and we're going to unfold symmetric editing with sewing and since this piece has symmetric editing with sewing and the front and the back do as well all we have to do is sew one side of the neck band and the other side will automatically sew to do that, I'm going to use a new sewing tool, and that is the M to N free sewing. There's no hotkey for this, which is a shame because I use it all the time, but it is under the, this is the segment sewing tool. It's under the free sewing tool, but you have to click down and hold to, to get to M N free sewing. All right, I'll show you how this works. The first thing we're going to sew is that we're going to click at the center front of the neck band. So just click there and then go all the way to the center back of the neck band, which is right here. And then that is our first seam. We want to tell it that that's our first seam. So we're going to press enter to complete that sewing. Now we want to tell it where it's sewing to. So I'm going to go ahead and it's nice because you can see in the 3D window where I'm sewing and I think that's where I want it to be. So I'm going to start at the same exact corresponding spot. I want that to go here. So I'm going to start at the center front. 
go all the way up to the shoulder. Then I'm going to click at the shoulder. Then I'm going to come to the center back and I'm actually going to uh, use my 3D window for reference here because I want to make sure I'm using the same side and that is the same side. So I'm going to click at the shoulder and then click at center back. And now I'm going to tell it that that's the other side that I want to be sewn together. So I'm going to press enter. And this is very confusing looking and this is also very confusing looking, but it works. Trust me. All right. So I want to go to actually I want to use the key right now I have the sewing tool active in the 3d screen so if I click on something it's going to be sad so I want to use the Q hotkey to use the I think it's select move tool in the 3d window and with that tool I'm just going to right click the neck band and then I'm going to go to superimpose side and that's just going to plop that right there where I sewed it. It's it's being smart. It's like, okay, well, you sewed it here, so we're going to be smart and put it there, which is great because when I simulate, it didn't have to fly through the air or cut through his neck to try to get into place. And the last thing that I want to do to this neckband is I just want to use the N tool, the segment sewing tool, to select the center backs and sew them together and simulate there we go we have a neckband okay the last thing we're going to do with this pattern is trace this pocket this front uh, chest pocket so we're going to use a new tool the polygon tool we used that was for creating the pattern outlines and now we need to use a tool to create the inside of the pattern so i need to create the lines that this pocket will get sewn to basically and that is going to be right here that's the internal polygon or line and that's the g hotkey so i'm going to go ahead and press that and then i'll just go ahead and the same exact thing i'm just clicking in these dots using my um pink guidelines to show me when I'm square. Also, you can hold down shift and it'll force you to be work at in a grid or a 45 degree angle. So that's another tool that you can use. But that shows me I'm squared up all the way there and I'm just going to finish it by clicking on the last dot. And then you'll see that it actually, and let me go ahead, I have my um, internal lines hidden. But you see, because we're working with a symmetric pattern, it put a po pocket on both sides and that is not a cute look. So I want to disable the symmetric pattern so I can delete one of those pockets. And to do, do that, I'm going to go to the A tool or the transform pattern tool. And I'm just going to right click on my front pattern. And I'm going to say, what am I gonna say? Remove linked editing. And that will just make it so it's no longer a symmetric pattern if I change one side, it's going to change the other. And we're going to prove that by with the A tool selected. I'm just going to select this pocket I don't want and hit delete and it's gone. All right. Uh, now that that's done, the one thing I want to do of, oh, I forgot to add the curve here. So that's the C hotkey. And I'll just go ahead and put that in. And now I have where the pocket is going to get sewn to. And that's nice. But the really cool thing is with that, those lines, I can actually just trace the pocket right off of it. So I'm going to go to the trace tool or, or the I hotkey. Just hit I. And I'm just going to hold shift and click all of these lines that make up the pocket. I'm going to right click and I'm going to ask it to trace as a pattern and then it's showing me i have the pattern all i have to do is click anywhere in the 2d window and it pops it into place all right now i want to sew it in sew it in place so i could use the the segment sewing tool and just individually sew these segments to each other or i can use the free sewing tool which is the m hotkey right up here free sewing and if i start in the this upper left hand corner of the pocket um, where I want it to be sewn to and just go all the way around and click in the upper right hand corner I can do the same thing on the pocket and I don't have to do all of those segments and that looks like that is going to sew really well in place and so I'm going to do something similar to the neckline where I right click and choose superimpose 
over. And that's doing a couple things. One, it's putting it in place, but two, it's telling the, the Clo 3D that I want the pocket to be on the outside of the garment. In fact, if I was to go superimpose under, it would put it actually on the inside. Uh, you can't really see it, but it's there somewhere. So that's not what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo, and there we go, and simulate. And there's my pocket. All right, the very last thing I'm gonna do on this pattern, and just because I want it to look fancy, is I'm going to add top stitching. You can see I had top stitching lines in this pattern here. And the first thing we want to do is actually add another internal line that's going to show where we want the top stitching to be. So I'm going to use the Z tool or the edit pattern tool. And I'm just gonna right click this line right here and I'm going to say add offset as internal line. And with that, with this menu popped up, all I have to do is type how far I want that in. So I want that in uh, 5, 0.5 inches. And you can see it offsets it pretty much exactly where that top stitching is. And I can press OK. And I want to do that same exact thing on the back and on the sleeve. So offset as an internal line, it remembered the 0.5 inches. OK. And then the sleeve. Offset as internal line, 0.5 inches. And there we are. And so now all I have to do is go to the top stitching tool, which, or uh, it's actually segment top stitching. And there is a hotkey for this. It's called K. And all I have to do is click on the, those lines and it'll turn them into top stitching lines. It may be a little bit hard to see because that top stitching is so small, but we'll be able to see it in the next step that I'm going to, about, and that I'm going to show you. And that is the schematic render. So if you want to see kind of the line drawing of what you've created, you can go ahead and click this icon all the way up here and it'll show you the schematic rendering version of your garment, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's where I'm gonna leave you today. Well done, you made it through. This maybe was your first tutorial in Clo 3 d So if you've made it this far, awesome. Most of Clo 3D is exactly what we just did. So congratulate yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.